Okay, now I'm going to show you a demo uh, concerning Bernoulli's equation. Uh, Bernoulli's equation is the main governing equation having to do with uh, uh, fluids in motion, fluid uh, dynamics. So, if you look at Bernoulli's equation, it's essentially a restatement of the conservation of energy because it's kind of like the same ideas that you get from mechanics. You have potential energy, potential energy, kinetic energy, kinetic energy. The rho is the same thing as what we call density. It's, we sometimes write rho, Greek letter rho, we write uh, English letter d. So this is the potential energy of the fluid. This is the kinetic energy. This is the pressure in the fluid. And this is the pressure in a, a different part of the tube in the fluid. And uh, we have here a setup called the Venturi tube. Venturi tube is a common tube used in, it's a tool used to teach uh, the Bernoulli's equation. And in the lab, we do very intricate measurements and stuff on it. And basically, the idea of it is that you have a tube here with a certain diameter. You have another tube with another diameter. And then you have an inner tube with a smaller diameter. So you have a tube like this. And then it gets narrower. Then it gets open wide. Okay. So you have uh, some air is going to come in with a certain velocity. Then when it goes from here to this tube, what's going to happen? Well, according to the Bernoulli's equation, in this case, we don't have any change of height happening. It's not going down or it's not going up. So the height is the same. We can call both of them zero. So you essentially have P1 plus half rho V1 squared is equal to P2 plus half rho V2 squared. So we see here that when the velocity goes up, the pressure goes down. When the velocity goes down, the pressure goes up. Then we have the continuity equation. Q is equal to A1, B1 equals to A2, B2. Since this is, uh, uh, we're going to assume air is an uh, incompressible fluid. So when you try to constrict it, more fluid flows through. So the, when the area goes down, the velocity goes up. So that means when you go from this part of the tube to this part of the tube, it should go faster. V2 should be bigger than the V1. However, there's going to be some frictional losses due to the fluid being compressed. So V2 is not going to be as high as it should be because the friction is going to eat away from the, the energy of the system. Then what's going to happen when you go from here to here? We can call that V3. Now the area opens up again, and V3 should go back down. V3 should go back down, and it should equal this. But if there's frictional losses, it should be even less than the original V. So according to uh, conservation of energy and Bernoulli's equation and the continuity equation, so. Therefore, then the, the sequence of what's going to happen is the fluid's going to uh, increase in speed, but not as high as it should, then decrease in speed and become even less than the original speed. So what does that tell us about the pressure in the fluid? Well, when the velocity goes up from here to here, the pressure goes down, right? So the pressure in this part of the tube goes, is, should be less than this one. How about... The, the third one. We can call that P3 plus half rho V3 squared. In here, the velocity should go back down to what it was here, but even less than here, okay? So when the uh, velocity goes down, the pressure goes up. So that means the pressure in this part of the tube should be even uh, greater than the pressure in this part of the tube because the velocity is less. So the way we can actually test this uh, is to have the tube, to have a, a, a release valve here, the, the, this part of the tube, and it's open to air here, and you have uh, some liquid here, it could be water, but we, we put green coloring so it's a little easier to see over here. So it's open to air. Then over here, in the middle, it's also connected to the middle portion of the tube, and you have a fluid 
and right now they're at the same level and then this is the third tube now what happens right now the pressure in here is the same as air pressure so it's the same level if the pressure here is greater than air pressure this one should be pushed down this one should go up and the difference of the two levels of the fluid uh, of the water tells us the pressure it indicates the gauge pressure in here okay the pressure in here same way if this one goes down and this one goes up the pressure is greater than air pressure same here so now I'm going to have a air source here on this side so you can tell here the pressure here is very strong that's T1 that's what we're calling T1 it presses this up to the top Okay, and uh, therefore the pressure in here is very big. Over here, the pressure in the tube is less than the pressure of the air, atmospheric pressure. The air pressure, the fluid is more down, so it's stronger than the pressure here. This one, the pressure here is going to be uh, bigger than air pressure, but not as big as this one. So the, what we have here, the, uh, the levels are closer. So based on that, in the laboratory, we can do measurements on that and we can see what, what are the governing equations, what are the energy losses from one tube to the other. And is the continuity equation really functioning there? So uh, we see from the running of the lab, you can see P1 was very big. It was greater than P2 because in P2 the order was reversed. And then P2 was greater than, uh, no, sorry, the P3 was the second one, okay? Because the pressure over there was greater than air pressure. And then P2 was the smallest pressure. And according to theory, remember I was saying that the one should increase and should go back down to the same V, perhaps less than the original V because of frictional losses, right? But what I didn't include in this equation is that there's some turn here due to the frictional losses of the pressure. Each time the pressure is decreasing because of the frictional losses. Therefore, the pressure P3, even though V3 goes down, all of that change doesn't propagate into the pressure. There's some pressure losses which we can call VP. From going from the first tube to the second tube and from the second tube to the third tube, there's pressure losses. So the pressure three, even though if V3 had been smaller, pressure three should have been more than pressure one, but it's not. So it is in the middle, okay? So as you can see, the Venturi tube is a great tool for studying pressure and friction losses for studying fluid flow and fluid dynamics. And uh, Bernoulli's equation is a great equation to study the mechanics of uh, fluid flow. Okay, thank you.